feature film. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> You are listening to The Big Questions. I'm your host, Robert K. Elder. Um, we are part of the Sun-Times Media Local Podcast Network, and my guest today is Mark Bazer. How are you? Hey, hey, thanks for coming. Yes, great. Uh, we're sitting here in Oak Park. and um, I'm, today, I'm envious of this garage that you have. My, my Yeah, that's not studio. just a garage. It's, there's an, uh, if, you can, if you can picture this, there's a second floor, and you can just come here and just be away from... From your family, <laughs> your family. Well, I'm, is... try, I'm trying to keep the the kids from falling in love with it. Because Just don't tell them about. Yeah, it. we're no. They there's two gaming systems over there. So oh, that's yeah. your, that was your first mistake. Yeah. you should have just said it was somebody else's house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we're here um, today um, to uh, talk about uh, friendship, and yeah. Uh, yeah. so that's that's one of the big questions: how we form ship friendships, why some last, why some don't. Um, uh, Mark, of course, is the host of the interview show, mm -hmm. and uh, how long has that been going now? You just had an anniversary. Yeah, six years. Six so, years. Yeah, I'm pretty. Uh, so if, for those of you who don't know, which is probably most of you, uh, it started. Uh, it's the hideout in Chicago and it's the, the point of the show was to kind of, uh, create, I guess, um, a show that fell somewhere in between, uh, Letterman or Leno or Fallon or Conan, those kind of talk shows and then Charlie Rose. Mm -hmm. So something that's, you know, hopefully the interviews are, are fun and interesting and, but also of substance. So entertaining. It was, my model is the Dick Cavett show. Right. So, so it kind of predates me, but I watched a lot on, YouTube and on DVDs, and I just fell in love with that and thought that's something that you got to get the that's, episode that's missing with yeah. that Chuck Berry and is it Chuck Berry and John Lennon and John Lennon is just like salivating the whole time like oh, he's really? just like the world's I, biggest Chuck huh, Berry fan. I've seen I, I've seen the Lennon with Yoko, yeah, but I haven't seen that. Oh, I, oh, I, it's I so great it. because yeah. you know, like for him, like that's his idol. You know, it's it's very very interesting to see how that goes. But um, uh, the reason so we we kicked around a couple of ideas for the show and uh, we chose friendship basically because we are both. Both, I don't know. We're both late thirties, right? Well, you, you speak for yourself. I just okay. turned forty. <laughs> but, well, I'm hurtling towards uh, forty. Um, I feel like I'm in my late thirties, if that means anything. Yo, I, feel I like still, I'm, I still I, feel thirty nine. I feel like I'm in my early twenties, so it's great. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so, my question is, wh why did this topic come up? Why, why did it float to the top for you? Well, I'm not from Chicago. Neither am I. Uh, okay. Yeah. But I've been here a long time, and I know you've been here for a while as well. I've been here since 99, I guess. 2000. So, okay. So, yeah. yeah. Um, and I've met – I've got a lot of great friends here, and I've got some very close friends. However, the people that I feel I still have the greatest bond with, for whatever reason, are people from – High school, who n none of whom live in Chicago, and some from college, and and it's it's always it's been more pronounced I think since since moving to Oak Park where I've met a lot of people who who I love who I think are great and who we get together and I see these people more than I probably see I certainly see these people more than I see people from Boston where I'm from sure but at the same time it's it's not impossible. But it's much harder to find that intangible connection with people you meet as you get older, I feel, than it is people you meet when you're younger. And I think that holds true for, for a lot of people, I think. But on the other hand, I also know that many people lose touch with people from high school and many people lose touch with people in college and even with Facebook and even with other ways of easily knowing what's going on. That doesn't mean that they're a real presence in your life. But for me, they have been. And, and so I think I broached the topic to you and, and you said, well, I, I, I think I have some, some different takes on that. So it seemed yeah. like a good thing to talk about. Yeah. But I have to say, I, I recently went to, I was thinking about it. I think I brought it up because I, I recently went to New Orleans and this was with some college friends. And we don't, we don't talk that much over, over social media and we don't email all that much, but we, I consider them very close and, when we got together, it was, I th it was, you know, not to sound cliche, but it was if, as if we hadn't had three months without seeing one another. Right. And it, it wasn't, and the, and what's great about it is it's not friendship built on nostalgia. It's not remember when that happened because that's, that's, I mean, that probably does happen to some degree sure. and that probably happens with any relationship. But, you know, a friendship 
probably only remain strong if new things occur and right. new ideas happen and new fun, whatever you want to call it. So, so, you know, maybe when we're 80, we can look back and say, Hey, remember what happened? Maybe at that point we'll get to it. But you know, so it's not, it's not, you go back for your reunion and you say, Oh yeah. Yeah. Remember when we used to go to this bar or used to this place? Like that's, that's not really a topic. It's, right. it's, it's, it's still, it's still on its forward trajectory or whatever. Well, and my, my, my interest in, again, my, my experience is a little different in that, uh, again, I'm not from here and, uh, you know, my best friends are, you know, in Portland and Seattle and, you know, I, I grew up in Montana. So I'm a little removed from them. You know, we still talk. And in, fa and in fact, uh, for 15 years, we've been trading audio letters. So we, we keep in touch that way as well. Um, but it's also sort of very hard. Again, there are people I like. Uh, you know, we are recording this on my poker table. So, you know, yeah. it's, it's how I'm uh, social. But I'm interested in how friendships change and especially how late in life how you develop, uh, new friendships, cause it's so much harder. Um, and you said something very interesting, uh, earlier, uh, when we were talking about this, about how and why we form friendships. And you think it has a lot to do with sense of humor. I do. And I, and I've slightly adjusted that a little bit. I think that's a main, a huge thing. And mm -hmm. I think that's something that what's interesting about it is when you're in high school or you're in college or even pre that, I think what may happen is that you develop along with your friends a collective sense of humor. Sure. So when I come to you and I hang out with you and we get along great and, and I would consider you a friend, but I don't know that my sense of humor is, it's been formed. It is what it is. That doesn't mean I can't grow as a person. I'm, I'm sure I can a little bit, but your sense of humor is probably not going to influence me that much. And my sense of humor is not going to influence you that much. We might laugh at each other's jokes and we probably share a lot of similarities in that. Yeah. I was going to say, we probably have the same cultural reference points where, you know, probably, you know, Monty Python, probably, Ooh, what's that? Yeah. No. <laughs> probably, you know, like, you know, I was trying to think of like, you know, evil dead Two, reservoir dogs, like all the sort of Nintendo weirdness. And maybe you didn't grow up with this at all. Well, I, I, I mean, I, I you mentioned a few things and <laughs> the only one that, I mean, I've, I've seen them all. I don't think I've seen Evil Dead 2, but uh, I sh I, all right, we well, want to just stop this yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, we'll put it on. You're, you're, you're living but on Monty it. Python's the only one that I said, oh, that that's that speaks to me there. Yeah. Um, but it's not just it, – it, that's certainly a part of it, cultural references. But another part of it is I anybody who has a strong group of friends, there is a interplay there, especially a group of friends that I think was formed early. There's an interplay there and a – a style of humor and a, a, not, not necessarily references, but just the way you joke about things that is unique. That doesn't mean that other, that other people might not get it. It's not inside jokes necessarily. Right, there's it's just, not exclusive. No, there's just something. I, if I, I would have to be much smarter to be able to actually define what that is with my high school friends or what it is with my college friends. But I think people know it. I think you know when you get together with your high school friends. I mean, there's, there's, you know, what's, what's interesting about a group of high school friends is you might have one guy who, or two people, if you're, who you're really close with, who right. you'd call up and you'd confide in. And then there might be another guy who's close to that, one of the guys that you're close to, but you're not as close to that guy, but he's still in the group. There's still that group of friends. And you get together with him and you might not share your, share your, you Deep, know, deepest, darkest. Right. But, but there would still be that instant ability to just latch on to whatever that sense of humor was. So that's where I think that comes in. Right. So that, I guess that's what I was kind of thinking about. Well, and I'm interested, you know, uh, again, as we, uh, as we get older, just what the function of friends are. Uh, and I, you know, I talked to my wife a little bit about this because, uh, you know, we had a friend who was, was doing something that I was like, you know, you should probably say something. You doing know? something bad. Doing something yeah, yeah. Like, you know, like, uh, for me, cheating. <laughs> no, no, was it? The, was <laughs> no, no. It, it was. was it's, it, it's something. Was so it John? It's no, not, it was, <laughs> so we don't. I just made that name. It's, so, it's, a, it's something so. so John's cheating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's something so specific. I I can't even mention it. Yeah, but it's one of those <laughs> things. Um, that what are the what is the function of friends? You know, for me. Like I would say something and I would want my friends to say something like they are people who should, who call you on your bullshit. Like for me, like that's a, that's a primary function of a friend is your reality check. 
And uh, for my wife, she's like, oh, no, no, no. Yeah. Like, I'm thinking I might be with your wife. Oh, well, tell me why. Because, again, like I, I don't need to be surrounded by yes men, you know? Yeah, you hire those. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't know. I mean, what, I guess – I guess I don't want to. I mean, it depends what the level of bullshit is. If I were, let's let's take if I were if I were cheating, right? And let's say I, I were cheating. I'm 40. Let's say I were cheating with a 21 year old. Congra- congratulations, by the way. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> and let's say her name was Anna. And let's no. Um, <laughs> but I would. I, I don't. I guess in that case, yeah, I would want a friend to maybe step in and say, "You're." And this is maybe what you're talking about. Like, come on, man. This is this is really not good. You can't do this. Blah blah blah. You're just killing. You're destroying your family. You're destroying right. your life. In that case, sure, fine. But I don't want that for for little things, for small things. If I'm just being an idiot, if I'm just being a little bit of of. I mean, one of the great things about friendship is that there isn't that level of scrutiny, scrutiny or yeah. judgment, and and so I think. Uh, now, now, one of the other things that I think is interesting when I when I talk about like high school friends or college friends, those some of the those folks for me are you know there's this cliche that guys don't share their feelings or that guys don't like to talk about things, and for me that's been the like, that's been completely not not true. Mm-hmm. I, I, for whatever reason, from my earliest from high school, we would just spend hours just talking about things. I don't mean we'd be you know, sobbing over our love lives or anything like that. But if we had a problem or something was going on or there was some deep issue, these were people that, that I could talk to about that and then they could talk to me about it. That doesn't mean that I mean, we obviously didn't spend most of our time doing that. Sure. But, you know, when I when I went to New Orleans, again, this is this trip is fresh in my mind. Right. And the bail money is not yet paid back. <laughs> right. what, a, what a city, man. What a great place. Uh you know, there, most of it was fun. Most of it was great. But then there were times when we would s- just sit down for whatever reason, one person or two people, and just just talk about things going on in our our lives that were that were either really good or really bad or somewhere in the middle. And at this point, well, like what 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 categories do, do that fall does that fall into? Like, is that like kids or jobs or you know? Like, I, I'm interested in how that conversation evolves within the same confines of that early developed friendship. Well, my, I guess my, my, it, it would be about stuff going on now. So kids, jobs, sex, all those kind of things. Sure. But hopefully but, not in that order, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but, it, but I wouldn't, my point, I guess, was when I initially thought about how these friendships that I wouldn't have that conversation. I don't think I'd have that conversation with you. Hmm. And the reason why I don't think I'd have the conversation with you is not because, because we have a microphone. <laughs> right. But, but let's say we put these away and sure. let's say these were just fake microphones. I mean, even, not because I thought you would – that you couldn't respond, that you wouldn't have good advice or good sure. thoughts. I know you would. But I'd also probably think that you would think that I was being strange, that this – there was something wrong or weird about me taking our relationship to this deep level. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, maybe if we were at a bar. No joke. I mean, maybe, yeah. maybe that's <laughs> it's, what – It's all about setting for dudes. Right. Yeah. Maybe that, that would be fine. But – you know, relationships require – any any relationship that's deep usually requires history. Right. Well, and I think that's true. It reminds me of a, a, a you know, a Curb Your, Enth- a Curb Your Enthusiasm uh, episode where Larry David was talking about like, hey, well, do you confide in your friends? And he's like, oh, no, no, you don't want to burden them. You know? <laughs> I think it's him and – in, uh, uh, oh, God. Uh, Richard – Lewis. Richard Lewis. Who will yeah. say anything. Who, yeah. who will – who will – I mean, in real life, he will probably – Yes. Share anything he, he with his friends, but I mean. but it was but it was it was very very funny about like no no you know that's what you have a shrink for you you don't want to burden your friends yeah <laughs> and so but to me the sh- the problem is like when you go to a shrink you know the sh- I've, shrinks frustrate frustrate me incredibly because you go there and you say something and they you want you want advice or something and they right. don't they're they're not supposed to do that like they don't they'll steer you and they'll get you there somehow and I don't understand it enough to probably talk intelligently about it but they're not going to say. No, you shouldn't do that. Whereas a friend might say that, right. or a friend might say, or or what a friend will say, which is which is helpful, is, oh yeah, I'm having that problem too, right. because obviously misery loves you know loves company, or, especially if it's a good friend. You want them to be as miserable as you are, or commiseration. Like you know, I think I yeah. think ha- half of our problems is we have to realize like, oh, oh hey, we're we're not alone. We're not alone. That's right. Um, Absolutely. I, I'm also interested in uh, again the sort of arc of friendship. And that is when you have to let people go. 
like when a friendship ends, maybe not an old friendship, maybe a new friendship, how you've navigated that. And I'll share a little bit here just sure, because, yeah, because yeah. um, you know, it's, it's, it's weird. I, I have a, uh, good group of friends like from college and from, uh, you know, uh, publications where I worked in high school, but sometimes people just drop out. And, you know, uh, just because I, I uh, am a 14 year old girl, like for no reason, like my feelings are hurt about that. And there's no reason they should be just because people have other obligations, you know, uh, and maybe they just end up on the Christmas card list, but it's this weird sort of transition. And maybe I'm the only one uh, affected by it. But, you know, I, I guess people come and go, but it always sort of, maybe it makes, maybe it just makes me feel older. No, I, I absolutely hear what you're saying. I, I, there's, you know, I got married in 2000 and there's, yeah, 2000. And there's, uh, folks, people, friends, friends who were at my wedding whom I'm not in, you know, in touch with at all anymore. Mm-hmm. So why, why, why did that happen? Why were they so close that they were invited to, to my wedding and I to their weddings, right. which is, you know, you don't have everybody that you know to a wedding, but yet for whatever reason. And, and so there's, there's obviously friends that are, are location based. You know, sometimes they're people from work that you, that you see every day. Sure. Sometimes they're people, you know, if I'm like, okay, great. If I moved right now from Oak Park, the, the reality is that 85, 80, 90, 85, I don't know percent of the people that I engage with in Oak Park, I would probably lose contact with. Yeah, they would be Facebook friends. Right. So why, so, uh, you know, and that's, that's, I guess, that's reality. I, I mean, and so, so, but I don't know why, I think it's rare that later in life you meet people that, that, for whom that's not true. On the other hand, why did it happen with people that you met when you were younger in, in your case? And there's been a couple in my case as well. I don't know. Some people are really bad at keeping in touch. <laughs> Yeah. And they, they might argue, we're fine. Yeah. We're great. But, you know, I'm like you. I would think, what? What's going on? No, no, we're not. No, we're not. One of the things that I, I should, would love to mention is that my high school friends and I, it's about seven, eight or nine of us. And when we were in college, we, I had a friend who went to, to MIT and this, you know, we, we went to college like very much the early days of, of not the early days of the internet. It existed, but the early days where it was really something that was around and email had just gotten to colleges and everything like that. Mm-hmm. And so he set up a, a list, uh, uh, like a group, an email address that we would all email into. Now these things, you can, they're a dime a dozen, but at the time they, they weren't around as much. And he, his dad at MIT, his dad was a teacher at MIT, I guess, and set up a, a, an address that I, that we still use that was, everybody would email it to that address and everybody would get the messages. And so. You're still using a CompuServe email address? Yeah, it's, it's an <laughs> MIT address. Actually, we had to change it because for some reason, we had to change it for some reason. But it was an MIT address, which made us feel very, very smart. Yes, yes. Um, but every day, so, you know, I went, I graduated, I started college in 91. So every day for over 20 years now, I've had uh, the, the great, like, gift, I guess, of looking forward to just a conversation happening with my high school friends. That's, you know, sometimes, some days it's, I mean, it's, it's covered every single issue possible. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a a lot of just funny stuff, a lot of serious, you know, some serious stuff, some stuff that's in the news, some, just whatever friends talk about. Right. And some days it's, 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 you know, less robust and other days there's just, you know, millions of messages and it carries me through work. I mean, it does. It's carried, like, I honestly, my life would be significantly worse Mm -hmm. without this, without this email group. And. So, so in some ways, I guess I have to credit technology for, for maybe this, this change in, or this, the way our friendships have sustained themselves. But, but it's, uh, I don't know. That's been one way that, that friendships haven't fallen off yeah. in that group, perhaps. Well, and that's also, uh, you know, one of the Twitters of, uh, one of the Twitters, one of the founders of Twitter, that was one of the reasons that he founded it expressly so he would feel less lonely. Huh. That, that he would, you know, sort, sort of create this little network. So it's interesting that you, uh, you pre-tweeted him. Well, what's interesting is, so I, because of this, this group, mm-hmm. I have a harder, I don't feel like I need, whenever I think of something funny or something interesting or, or something maybe even not either one of those things, but something I just want to say, I will email them and I have no need to put it up on 
like, I don't think I need to put it up on Twitter or I think I need to put it up on Facebook. Like sometimes I do, but, right. but it's not like for, for whatever, you know, I have, I have this group of friends and I'm like, oh, that's who I would, I'm going to share, share these things with. They're my friends. Right. Right. You know? And they're, they're a built in audience. They already know your sense of humor and, yeah. and that sort of stuff. So, yeah. so and you, I'm much more confident, I guess, in that arena too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. like, oh, what will people think or will people interpret? You know, we can say things that I'm not worried that somebody will interpret it the wrong way or that it's, it's, you know, I mean, it's, well, it's, it's, it's the reason that share these things. It's the, the reason that, world. it's the reason that Adam Sandler has made the same kind of movies with like the same four guys. Yeah. You know, like he's comfortable with them. You know, maybe it's not for everybody, but that's his core group of guys. You know, him, Rom Schneider, and all those, the, you know, those folks. I mean, you always hear about actors, like, I think Clooney's one, who, who, you know, he's just says, Oh, I just hang out with my, my buddies, you know, and they're, they're, I mean, that's another thing. Like, that's another point about early friendships. They usually don't, they usually are not dictated. They're dictated by location because they're where you grew up often or right. where you went to school. And, and obviously we share similarities based on, you know, probably social s strata and what our parents might have done or anything like that. But they're not, they're not based on what necessarily what your, your professional interests are. So a lot of the people I know in the Chicago area that I've met are people in the media, people, obviously that's people I've worked with or people that have, that have, maybe I didn't work at a job with them, but I met them through some other means or whatever. But my high school friends or my college friends, they're doing things that have more so my high school friends that have nothing – like one's an archaeologist, one's a psychologist, one's a – you know, works in some computer thing. Like they're just – it's all over the map. It has no – it's not a professional relationship at all. Mm -hmm. So so I want to go back to my earlier question and that is like at a certain point, what is the function of friendship? I think the function of friendship is is to – you know, a lot of life is, is not, not enjoyable and friendship's enjoyable. Like fr friendship makes life worth living. I mean, obviously there's other things, family, family and friends. Like that's what it comes down to. Like that's, that's, I mean, yes, you feel good if you accomplish something. Yes, you feel, you can feel great about work. Yes, if you create something great, you should feel good about that. But, but the, the times, like if I looked, I mean, maybe this is to my detriment, but if you said to me, you could go work on this thing right now and you're going to accomplish it and it's going to be great. Or you could go hang out with your high school friends for that time. I choose my high school friends 95% of the time mm -hmm. because that's, that, I mean, that's, that's, that's enjoyable. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, uh, we'd like to bring your family in now. This is yeah. actually an intervention. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, no, no. I mean, my family too. Let's include family okay, with that. Okay. Yeah. I don't mean, I mean, you asked about friendship in particular. Absolutely. So, yeah. But, but I, I'm thinking more in, in sort of like, you know, social terms and what we get from it. Yes, we get enjoyment, but, you know, do we get to see ourselves in them? Do we get a sounding board? I, I'm just talking about um, what we get and how that changes over time. God, I don't know if I'm going to be that deep, but I think uh, well, does it does it help you maintain a, a, a semblance of youth? Like because you know these you knew these guys when you were young, it helps you connect to your younger self. I don't think so. Maybe, but I don't. I don't. I don't think so because you know I find like hanging around younger people might make me feel. I mean, I'm not that old, but but hanging like my office is mostly younger people. I feel like that makes me feel younger. Mm -hmm. Then, and I think I don't want, I don't want that feeling with my friends, even as old as they are, that I'm, that they remind me of high school or that they, rem I mean, that's not it. Like they and, don't. And that's, that's not, I'm not talking yeah. about nostalgia. I, I think what I'm saying is they connect you to, you know, your youth and they ground you in that. I don't, I don't know. I think it comes down to, I think it comes down to people who you know, care about you i think that's that's an a very nice thing to have right i think it also comes down to people who who don't just make you laugh but but challenge you to make them laugh if that makes sense not that everything's built around humor or laughter but but it there's you know it's, maybe it's more with guys but there's definitely a one-upmanship yeah you know you you say that thing that's funny and this puts, gets me on my toes to say something back to you that's funny. And right. I think that's not that, I think that's a, that's a, it's not the only part of friendship, but I think it's a big part of it. I think that's a, that's a guy thing as well, because, you know, my wife, my, my best friend is Aaron. He lives in Seattle. And whenever he visits, uh, she'll say like, 
no one makes you laugh like he does. You know, yeah. like, like you, you have this like high pitched laugh that only, that I only hear when he visits. So that's the point of friendship right there. <laughs> so you can laugh on a high pitch. I mean, seriously, like what a great, what a great that when you're laughing, something's going on in your body. That's great. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's to me is, is, and I guess, I don't know. I think, um, I think it's good also to know in a world in which, you know, there's certainly everybody has, everybody's different. It's obviously a beautiful thing, but sometimes hearing everybody's, and not that your friends are the same as you, but, but there's something nice about knowing that there's this group of people who are, who are just like on your side. Yeah. Like you're on the same team. Not that you're, not that your team is always playing other teams in the world, <laughs> but, but when, when you're reading about this or that and you're encountering your boss and your boss thinks this way or even, you know, your wife thinks this way or though your wife obviously s- serves a strong similar role. Sure. Uh, or husband. Um, but, but when, when it sometimes seems not that the world is against you, but the world doesn't give a sh- care about you. I don't know what I could say sometimes. <laughs> I, I think we're okay. Uh, okay. Uh, that there's a group that's, that's, it's, that's, uh, that's, it's your team. You're wearing the same uniforms. Yeah. You know, you, 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 you've, you, you're in the same locker room. You're in the same clubhouse. You get each other. You know, uh, I want to circle back to something we, uh, I mentioned before, and that is like when it doesn't work out, when you have to, yeah. when you have to break up. I think yeah. women are more confrontational. I think, you know, I think it's been written about where they, they actually say like, oh, you know, I, th- I think we need to see less of each other. We're not, <laughs> yeah. um, dudes don't do that. Dudes, nah. it's, it's like, you know, so for, uh, for you, you know, how, how do you know it, it's probably not going to working out, or work out or that you need to get distance from this new friendship or this friendship that's old that you think you've outgrown? Uh, my problem is probably the, I, I, I t- don't like dealing with that kind of thing. And I'm, I've had a few, I don't think this is a little different than what you're talking about. I've had a few like, awkward friendship experiences in my, in my life and in mm-hmm. my adulthood. And they, and I don't want to talk about them, but they, <laughs> they like just thinking about them just makes me like well, feel something in my stomach that give, I just give don't me, even. Give me a category at least. Like, what are you talking about? Just if I, if either they did something or I did something where I, I thought, uh, Either there was a misunderstanding or, or they thought that I was doing something that was, um, well, one of us thought the person was doing something that was selfish, or perhaps. Rude or, or yeah. It was a manner thing. Yeah. And, and it's not, and, and then, and then I guess as I've gotten older, I, I, if somebody does that to me, I almost feel at this point, just don't, don't, don't bring it up. Yeah. Just ignore it. It'll go away. It's not that big of a deal. Like I've, I've, as I, I've, I used to like not with friends, but I used to probably get into more confrontations in life. Hmm. And, and now I, I just really, it's just not, it's not worth it. Yeah. And know? it's also, it's not, it's also like not a, a three's company episode. No, you know? no. Like it's never funny. <laughs> you no, know? you feel, you just feel terrible and they, they, those kind of things, they just stick with you. I don't know though that I've ever, ever broken up with a friend. I can't. I'm trying to think of if, if I, if that's ever really happened. I, I don't usually, like you're saying, it's more of a slow fade. It's more of a drift. You yeah. Know? Like, and, and, and even if you set them off, like on a Viking funeral, you're very unlikely to shoot a flaming arrow, you know? No, like, there's no, no. There's nothing. I mean, it's, you know, I got other friends. Yeah. It's, it's not, it's not like getting divorced. It's <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, for me, you know, it is kind of like getting divorced and I've, ha- I've had this just recently. Um, not that, you know, I'm, broken up you know uh, if they reached out again you know I, I think it's my role in amongst my friends that i'm the person who contacts first so yeah. like it's on the onus you know the onus is on me and at a certain time at a certain point i'm just kind of tired yeah it's like you know what I, I realize i've established this as the way we communicate but would it, would it kill you to pick up the phone or send me an email it's a weird it's a yeah i know exactly and i'm probably have been in that role more than i've been in in the opposite role and the best friendships the friendships that work are the uh, it's obvious are the friendships where it, both people pick up the phone at yeah. the exact same time you know remember yeah. that used to happen once in a while when you were a kid <laughs> yeah. rotary phones you you just pick up the phone be like, hey somebody else on the line like yeah. it would happen once in a year um but yeah i think 
it, that is, and maybe maybe it's something you know when you're walking down the street and you always think that you're the guy that has to move out of the way, and the other guy just would barrel through. But maybe they're you're both moving, yeah. And maybe maybe that person thinks that he reaches out, and and you you just don't. You're like, no, you don't. Yeah. But he's like, yeah, I do. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, that's 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 possible. Well, and we all have very busy lives, and you know, most of us have children. Uh, so I, I let most of that go. But that's an interesting thing. Like I feel that for me. I will, and, and I will, no matter how busy life is, you know, you know, no, no matter how many things are going on with children or family or whatever, like, I want to make sure that doing things with friends and talking to friends happens, mm. you know, that that's a priority. Whereas, I think there are other people who, who think, and that, and they're not wrong for thinking it, that, okay, I'm this, I'm friends with this person, but you know what, I've got all these things going on, and I don't. When I have the little downtime I have, I don't want to, I just want to be alone or I've got to, or, you know, you know, you know, you never know what's going on in somebody's life, right? right? You don't know whether they have somebody at home. Maybe they have a spouse who's telling them that they have to, you know, clean the gutters every week. Yeah. I don't know. That, you that know, Mark Bazer is a bad influence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when was the last time he cleaned the gutters? <laughs> Water. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I was dying, yeah, coughing. You're coughing. We're, we're back now. So you went to get some water, and when you went to get some water, I, uh, you know, I was thinking, like, am I saying anything that makes sense? Started to worry about that. Started, you know, I, you know, that sounds stupid. And then I uh, w- looked on my phone, and there was an email from my friend, who's an archaeologist, I was talking about, who's in Mexico, and he's just just told a funny story about he how he ate a whole rotisserie chicken, mm-hmm. and I responded in some way. And it just like that just made me made me happy, and it it was also I had no worry. It was there was no performance. I mean, I guess there is always a little performance with friendship, but but there was no worry what anybody would think. There was no worry that that nobody that somebody didn't want to hear that that somebody would turn off the podcast right. that somebody would you know what I mean? Like anything that you encounter in your daily life, not that you spend your whole day worrying, but I think. You know, there's always when you, when you're doing something at work, is is this going to be good enough? Right. Are they going? Is my boss going to like it? Is this client going to like it? Um, same thing. Uh, you know, you worry about you know you worry about your kids. Are they doing all right? Blah blah blah. Yeah, survival uh, anxiety. Yeah. Whereas this was just you know these these moments when you're with your friends and now you can just do it anytime you want. You can just look on your phone and sure. get an email. But those moments with your friends are. Getting you away, ideally, from survival anxiety. It's a good term. I like that. So, <laughs> well, and, and so what, you know, I, I think you're lucky, lucky. I don't think most people have this, this, this network. Um, so the, so, well, I think so people have like, good sets of good friends. Right. But right? this sort of <clears throat> at your fingertips yeah. exchange, I yeah, think, no, I, I, nice. I, I, I think most people don't have that. So I, I'm, I'm curious about, um, uh, so your wife, you know, Gina. So, you know, how does she react to this? group of friends oh she, she she like tonight she said like so what are you guys talking about right now in email and then i you know i'm not gonna tell her everything but i'll tell her a few topics and then we'll discuss those topics a little bit so i mean she knows them all right. you know what i mean like, but but, we, we but does she have that group i, I i'm because i i don't think you yeah. understand i don't think you realize how unusual and fortunate you are no i i guess all right i i do realize that i'm that it's i'm fortunate but but i do think that I don't want to sound like my group of friends is better than your group of friends. Right. I think, you know, she doesn't have that daily interaction, but she does have some good old friends that when she gets together with, you know, like when we go to, you know, when we go to New York, we go to New York probably once, once a year and we always stay, we have, you know, we know a, a number of people there, but we always stay with a good college friend of hers and, you know, I can just tell, like, when you go to New York or you go to any place, you feel you're in a foreign place and that can be intimidating and New York can be intimidating. But, you know, you just go with her and you hang out with her and, and I know she just feels like, oh, here I am. We're at, I'm at home. Right. Or not, I'm not at home, but I'm, I'm, I'm where I belong. I'm where I feel perfectly comfortable here. Right. So I guess that's, that's something that's nice. <laughs> Uh, you but have, you're right. Her friends are not as good as my friends. <laughs> you have been listening to the Big Questions, uh, part of the Sun Times Media Local Podcast Network. Uh, we are sponsored by Sure Microphones. Uh, visit them. On, are you really? Yeah. 
visit. Really? The, yeah. Is that all? If I want microphones, can I just? Because I want these <laughs> microphones. I didn't visit them on the web. Because beforehand, you're like, I went out and got all this equipment. They just gave it to you. <laughs> visit them on. Hey, the sure. Web. I'd like to be sponsored. <laughs> visit I have them a on show. the web at s h u r dot com dot com dot com. <laughs> um, Mark, thanks so much for having me. Yeah, it's fun. Come.